Hey everybody, welcome back to Tim Travels. It's Terry, your host, coming to you from a rainy <clears throat> uh, Verona, Illinois. I'm here at one of my secret train watching spots. So it's uh, it, and, and it's not boding well for the train spotting because um, while it's very necessary, there are some guys, so I'm right near a crossing and uh, I just saw some maintenance away guys get on the tracks and head west. So when maintenance away guys, it's like, you know, the railroad construction crew, when they're on the tracks, trains speeds are reduced even on nearby tracks. But I, you know, this is a two track main coming through here. So it's a, like a super busy rail line. This is actually the old, um, I think this is the old Santa Fe line out of Chicago, which BNSF, of course, owns. And um, this is the line that goes all the way, well, it goes, like it goes through um, Fort Madison, Iowa, goes down. This line goes to Kansas City and beyond. This is the, uh, this is like the, one of the transcontinental lines. Actually, this this a lot of trains that go through here, you would probably see if you're driving across I-40 in like New Mexico, Arizona. Um, anyway, so uh, I, I did see a couple of trains when I was coming out here to park um, going east. So we'll we'll see if it picks up because um, they tend to come in bunches, it seems like. So anyway, and you're like, well, why are you out there watching trains? when you got a trainee on the truck and you know, so the answer to that is yesterday we delivered, so we picked up in Savannah and uh, picked up a Shaw load, which is flooring. And it didn't pay horrible, but the nice thing was it had a pretty tight schedule. So we just ran it overnight, picked it up. Um, let me see, today's Thursday. So we must've picked it up Tuesday, yeah. Picked it up Tuesday and delivered it on Wednesday, yesterday. We had to wait for it because we delivered on Monday in, um, in uh, I guess I spoke too soon because the crossing gates are coming down. But we delivered on Monday outside of Jacksonville. We, we just kind of like deadheaded up to Savannah, but we still had to wait several hours to pick it up. And I don't like the waiting when I have you know, we have hours, we have teams. So I guess those guys must have gotten off the track because this guy, oh, actually, I take it back. He's on the other track. He's on uh, main two there. So he's going to go by him, but he's heading west and intermodal, domestic intermodal. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, you know, we delivered on Monday morning and we didn't in but we couldn't you know so then i we went we went up to savannah but we didn't pick up until tuesday around i wanted to pick up early but it wasn't basically tuesday at noon and then we got up here yesterday at noon and we actually uh, i was kind of tired so i just stopped because i'd driven all night and i was like hey we don't need to get up right this second because I knew there was going to be traffic in the Chicago area. So we just kind of waited till after rush hour and we got, we delivered out in Elgin. I think we got out of there around noon. We had to kind of look for a trailer and everything. But then we, we went to the Loves in Hampshire, Illinois, but they put a, they put a load on us that is, a, you know, it doesn't pick up till tomorrow in down in Indiana. And I'm like, you know, I sent a message to my, um, I sent a message to my fleet manager. I'm like, dude, you know, this is not going to work for me. Um, meaning we're not running enough miles because we're trying to get, you know, a trainee to 50,000 dispatch miles. We're not running enough miles and candidly, I'm not making enough money. And, um, you know, I've explained that to my trainee. I don't like, I don't like hide the ball. I try to be very transparent about what the business of trucking is and what the calculus is. So, 
you know, we're going to quickly reach an inflection point. It's not like I haven't warned my, my fleet manager. I warned him like the very, I mean like the very first day or not, maybe not the first day, but like two days into this, I was like, dude, you're offering me solo loads that don't pay well, that, you know, that I'm waiting around for. Like we waited to deliver at a place. I think we waited, you know, like 19 hours to deliver. And then, you know, he wants to give me a load that, you know, has a dead, uh, you know, 400 mile dead head, which is fine. But then when the load doesn't, even with the dead head miles, it doesn't pay. It's like, mm, something, something's got to give, right? Like, like I don't need, I don't need a nine course meal but I gotta have something to sink my teeth into. So either it's gotta be a higher per mile rate, it's gotta be quicker, it's gotta run quicker, you know, but this idea that I'm gonna wait around 12 hours for a drop and hook and then deliver a drop and hook and, you know, be in some place with no cargo coming out. I mean, there's nothing there. There's no meat on that bone. Um, so anyway, that's that's kind of what's been going on. Um, okay, so let's talk a, a little bit about um, other trucking stuff. By the way, I, I specifically didn't label this video because I keep getting these people that are like, it's it like they want to make it out like I'm false advertising because I don't immediately start talking about what the subject line is. Well, here's the deal with YouTube. You can only put so much in the subject line. You reach 100 characters, you're done. Um, and I don't do clickbait. Like, I you, I don't think I have ever done a video where I'm like, did I get a ticket? Did I crash in the woods? You know, I don't do that kind of crap. And I also don't do, like, sensationalist stories. Now, I will do April Fool's videos. I've done several of those. Actually, if you go back and you look at the entire library of Tim Travels videos, if you find one on, that's dated April 1st, I pretty much guarantee it's a, uh, it's a prank. I did one a few years ago where I talked about getting in a wreck and how, um, <laughs> how the police officer that came, uh, it came to the wreck and I prayed for the guy that I hit because he was a kind of a false Christian and had lost his testimony. But you got to watch the whole video. It's pretty, I, I think it's, I think it's humorous. But, and you know, sometimes, sometimes I just do stuff to entertain myself, right? Like I'm out here, most of the time I'm by myself and I have time to think and I read a lot and, and, you know, taking a lot of information, but I also think are really funny things to do that crack me up and you know part part of staying happy I guess is having a sense of humor and and finding things that are funny like sometimes I find stupid stuff that drivers do like truck drivers I find it funny um sometimes I, a lot of times I just find it annoying but by the way I was <laughs> I was saying to my trainee I said you know a lot of uh, uh, because we've been like cut off and turned in front of by so many four wheelers. Like just yesterday, my trainee was at a four way stop and we clearly had the right of way. We waited for a vehicle to turn and then we, we are starting out and this dude comes into the four way stop. He never even stops and he just turns left in front of us and we were turning left. And, you know, like, like he was like, oh, I could just. I, and, you know, he saw us and I'm pretty sure he comes through that intersection all the time because it's in an area where it's like you wouldn't go down that road unless you work down there or you were like super lost. Um, but, yeah, he just like he was like, I think he was just like, yeah, I can beat that truck. And, um, you know, the funny thing is about beating a truck. And so if you if you've never driven a truck, what you may not realize is that a lot of trucks that are driving around are empty. And a, an empty truck can accelerate significantly faster than a loaded truck, as you might imagine. And I had a guy turn in front of me at, a, you know, he did the 
I can beat this guy, even though this guy's going straight, I can turn left in front of him and beat him across the intersection. I think this guy was surprised at, not that trucks do hole shots, but I think he was surprised at how fast I was into the middle of the intersection. And, you know, I'm like, hey, go for it, buddy. And here's the thing, I was, and this is what I was saying to my trainee. I said, I wonder if people realize that everybody that drives a truck at some point, they're going to be dry. It's going to be the last day they ever drive a truck for any number of reasons. But, you know, after about 20 years of putting up with bullshit, I, I could imagine where somebody is like, you know, screw it. I am not going to need a CDL after today. If somebody does something stupid and I've thousands of times I have I have made up for their stupidity by not crashing into them today, I'm just not going to worry about it. And, you know, here's the thing. I, I said that I have this ethical. I kind of have this ethical stand that if if I'm going to be at fault in an accident, you know, obviously I'm going to try really hard to avoid a collision. I don't want to hurt somebody because of my negligence. But when they're negligent, I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like, hey, I'll do what I can, but you're going to have to hope that my, my driving skills and the laws of physics are on your side. But at some point, you know, does a truck driver just be like, are they just like, you know what? I don't even care. And, you know, I was also telling my trainee, I said, the way, the way my life is structured even if, even if I, for some reason, was found liable for like a million bucks or whatever, I'm going to be like, good luck. Good luck finding any money. And, and the reason is I don't own anything. I mean, when I say I don't own anything, I, I own like clothing. Like I own, I own a bunch of suits. I own you know, several pairs of expensive dress shoes, um, expensive shirts and ties. And then I own the work clothes I wear on my truck, you know, hoodies, t-shirts, cheap pants from Walmart. I wear chucks and vans. I own nothing of value anymore. Um, I don't, I, I used to have a Rolex, um, that I gave away. I, I don't own a car. I am not on title on any real estate and, um, and any like cash that I have or other, you know, cash equivalent assets is all in, is all in accounts that can't be touched. And, and so <clears throat> I guess, you know, maybe, you know, like, I don't, I don't, I don't worry about liability that much. I, I mean, I want to keep my license because I still want to do this job for a while, but I, but I feel like a lot of people are counting on the largesse of truck drivers when they really shouldn't. I think truck drivers just instinctively try not to get in wrecks and oftentimes will sacrifice themselves, which, you know, that's, that's a personal choice. They'll often sacrifice themselves to avoid killing somebody else. But, um, but a lot of times, it, it you know, tr truck drivers have sacrificed themselves when they're not at fault. Um, and I don't really believe in that. But anyway, I just share that thought with you. If you're, a f if you're not a truck driver, <clears throat> tell your friends. Think about it. Um, you know, people make, people make mistakes around trucks and, you know, mistakes happen. But when you do stuff on purpose that really challenges the laws of, of physics and, and people's driving ability, you shouldn't be surprised if there's a bad outcome periodically. So it's just, uh, that's, that's my philosophy of the day. So I wanted to talk about the solar eclipse that's coming. So it's coming on the 8th, and I think today's the 5th. Um, and I told my fleet manager, I said, hey, we're going to take this load over to Ohio and we're going to deliver it, pick it up and deliver it tomorrow. But I want to be, I want to be gone. I want to be out West. And the reason I want to be out West is because <clears throat> first of all, I can get more miles, 
Um, but second of all, the eclipse is coming basically across the eastern half of the United States. So where it enters the United States is, I, I think, basically like Texas. And then it's going to be moving through like Arkansas, um, up through, I guess, Kentucky, Western Kentucky, Indiana, um, near Cleveland, near Buffalo, and then across like Vermont, and then probably exit out of the United States. And here's why I'm going to avoid that at all costs and try to get routed way far away from it. And you should too. First of all, some states like Vermont and Texas have said they've either put commercial vehicle restrictions in place or have basically said, hey, if, you're, if you drive a commercial vehicle, we'd appreciate you being off, not being on our roads at all on the day of the eclipse. The second thing is that the last time we had one of these, and, and I think it was only a partial eclipse, that was the 2017 one, in areas where the best eclipse viewing was available, traffic increased by 222 percent and my concern is you know even if i'm driving there's going to be people just pulled over on the side of the road and and it's going to be all sorts of crazy willy-nilly stuff and i you know i just don't want a part of it and by the way this this solar eclipse is um there's nothing scientific based about this um you know, Jimmy Swaggart said that this is just God's way of showing he can shut the sun off at any time. Um, so, you know, that's the explanation for it. God just announced that he was going to shut the sun off to show us his power. But um, I, in any event, I don't want to be anywhere near it. Um, and what I mean is in, in the area where it's observable and keep in mind, there's, there's a, there's a window area where it's like super, like it's going to be total, total darkness. And then there are areas outside that, um, that are going to be significant, um, darkness and ability to view it and stuff like that. And I don't want to be anywhere near it. Because I feel like it's it, it's it's the it's the equivalent of a full moon. Crazy stuff is going to happen, and you know, even when even on a regular night, it seems like there are some people that have difficulty having the trailer lights on their semi work, or cars that just can't manage to turn on their lights. And, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. There is never, never a night shift that I drive that I do not see at least one semi without trailer lights. And I don't see at least one car driving down the road with usually just the daytime running lights on, but oftentimes no lights on. And uh, that, the, that also, I guess, in the, in the small vehicle category, there's also going to be a couple of chuckleheads pulling utility trailers with no lights. Um, yeah, so it's just going to be that much worse, I guess you'd say. Um, now, getting back to the scientific side of it, I, I saw an article where they they asked a question. Oh well, what 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 impact is it going to have on animals? Because animals are just like circadian rhythm; like they don't give a crap about daylight savings time and stuff. I knew a farmer in Wisconsin when I used to live up there, and he was like, he didn't change his clock. So he's like, he's like, the cows don't change theirs. He goes, I milk at the same time. It's, I'm not going to change just because the government decided it was a different time. And that was his, his reason for doing that. But, but they asked, you know, what impact will it have on animals? And I said to my wife, I said, well, B will just simply um, roll over and go back to sleep. I mean, she, she doesn't really care day, night. She's just sleeping, you know, if, unless she has to bark at somebody. So anyway, my advice is, and, you know, I know we don't want to, most of us don't want to just take a day off because it's going to be dark. You know, that's, that seems dumb. So my advice is try to get loads that are going to be outside that area. So go to the Southeast that day, go out to, you know, the upper Midwest. So like West of the Great Lakes, um, you know, 
but stay out of that area that I was describing, you know, Texas on up through like Vermont, that huge stripe. Um, a lot of big cities are, you know, like Indianapolis, Cleveland, Buffalo. Um, I'm sure like, you know, maybe Little Rock, certain cities in Texas, just and stay away from it unless unless you unless you just want to see the thing. It, but know that it's it's not going to be conducive to making any money driving. Um, in my opinion, I think it's going to be pandemonium, to be honest with you. I mean, a lot of places are closing schools and stuff. So, you know, if they're closing schools, they think it's just, you know, it's not safe to be on the roads or whatever. Okay, speaking of not safe to be on the roads, um, as you may know, there was, uh, you know, I talked about severe summer summer severe weather the other day and i don't know i just had this maybe it's because i'm starting to geek out on the weather um but i just you know i just really feel like this is a this summer is going to be noteworthy for some reason although i don't think that it's going to be noteworthy for like severe weather in places we normally would associate it with like oklahoma texas panhandle um you know Kansas, let's say. Um, I think it's going to be in other places. And if you look at the two most recent tornado outbreaks, Ohio has been a big part of it. Um, Indiana, Kentucky. Um, and, you know, there was a whole bunch of video and, and I talked about this. Semis and tornadoes do not mix. And even an EF0 tornado is going to have winds over 100 miles an hour. Um, a, a, a derecho is going to have winds approaching or over a hundred miles an hour. You know, I talked about the derecho in 2020 out in Iowa. Some of the wind speeds out there were 140 miles an hour. Other, but you know, it's not, that's way higher than it takes to knock a truck over. And I'm going to show you a picture and, and credit to live storms media. I, I watch their videos. This picture, and, and sometimes it doesn't upload right, but I'll, I'll show you this picture and I'll, and I'll describe what you're seeing. So in that picture, that Walmart truck that's laying on its side, that truck is on the basically what I would call the foreground or the right-hand side of that Jersey wall. But it started out on the left side of that Jersey wall. If you look at how the road is, there was a fence put up. They put that Jersey wall up there for, um, I think, to make a, a little path along the side of the road for some reason. But that pick, that that fence that's there, was also knocked over. But I I'm guarantee that that truck was lifted over that Jersey wall and then slammed on its side. If you look in the background of that picture, and it'll be hard to see, but you can go to Livestorms Media and find this video. They had just flipped a truck back up on its wheels and under the underpass, or under the overpass, I should say, that's behind where that Walmart truck was. Um, severe thunderstorms, um, derechos, tornadoes, they're, they're no bueno for trucks. They're, it's worse than like an ice storm. And the reason is this, you can, you can do something about bad road surface conditions by just not getting on them. But when you're, when you've put your truck and yourself in an area where there's going to be severe, you know, as they call it, all hazard threats, there's nowhere to run, Right. You know, a lot of people, I, I think a lot of people don't realize how wide tornadoes can be. I mean, it's it's not unheard of to have a tornado that's a mile wide. Um, it's also not unheard of to have tornadoes moving at 50 miles an hour um, over ground. So, and and by the way, I, I, I'm not great at math, but I do watch some people that are meteorologists and understand this stuff. And, you know, they point out that a tornado's forward moving speed, that gets coupled, coupled with the wind speed. So you can get hit by something that's moving 50 miles an hour, except it also has winds that are moving 100 miles an hour. And it's additive. It's additive. 
So that means you're going to get slammed by something that's like 140, 150 mile an hour gust. You're going over and you'll be lucky if all you do is go over. That truck, I'm very confident, was airborne and got that's how it got on that side of the Jersey wall. And it, it probably didn't go very far airborne, but the point is <clears throat> a powerful tornado will take an 80,000 pound truck and chuck it like a quarter mile. You will not survive that. Um, so that's my message, you know. I'm I'm not a meteorologist. I don't play one on YouTube, but I've but I've studied this a little bit, just a little bit, and I'm starting to understand some of it. And it's it's more scary than I kind of imagined. Cuz I've actually when I was a brand new trucker, I drove through the worst thunderstorm of my life out in Kansas. And I was the only truck on the road, and you know, I'm still here, but I probably was tempting fate. Um, my my thinking was I'm just going to drive west as fast as I can and get get away from this thing. Maybe that was the best strategy. I don't know. But anyway, so uh, anyway, be safe. Um, like I said, get get away from that that eclipse if you can, um, and pay attention to the weather. And uh, oh, somebody asked me about. Um, loves doing getting paid parking because they've numbered a lot of their parking spots. Um, I talked to somebody at Loves today and they they were very adamant that Loves had considered going to paid parking. Um, but after Tom Love died, they considered it and they decided not to, that they, they're not going to do that. So as of now, they are not going to do that. Um, doesn't mean it won't change. So anyway, uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.